mugisha cyane Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Father, we thank you today. Because you are Jehovah El Shaddai. There's no one like you. From east to west, there's none like you. And so here we are standing in your presence. In a humble adoration, we declare the peace of of God that surpasses all human understanding to fill our hearts. Father, we give you praise. Even as we get excited to hear your word, I pray that you speak to our hearts. Challenge us today. Change us for your glory. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may take your seats. Glory be to God. Today is uh, the last Sunday as we navigate through this uh, teaching series of uh, stepping into your healing. And uh, it's been a, a whole month of teaching. But on Sunday, we are going to uh, allow you to ask questions. In most churches, people don't ask questions. And so people go back home with the questions at heart. So I want to encourage you if you did not understand certain parts of the messages you can write your question then on Sunday all the pastors will be here to answer all those questions. You can contact any Asha, leave the question behind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we started with uh, this teaching series, Stepping into Your Healing. And I talked about different keys that will help you. And uh, the first Sunday, I talked about the first key where you have to make the first step. When people do mistakes in your life, when they hurt you, it is good for you to reconcile with them. And for you to reconcile with them, it takes them to come and meet you. But in most cases, they don't. So because it is you suffering, make the first move. And ask your brother forgiveness. And then the second key we talked about begin with what is your fault. Yes, they wronged you. But most likely, you also made some mistakes. You may have done a few mistakes, but a mistake is a mistake. So it is always good for you to discover the mistake you also committed. The third key we talked about, let them know. Some people wrong us and we don't know, they don't know they wronged us. But for you who is a victim, you are suffering every day. Yet the people who wronged you, they have no idea what happened. Either they forgot or they don't know. So it is important for you who is suffering to go and tell them the mistakes they committed. And then number four, we, we talked about how you should forgive yourself. 
Forgiveness is a journey. And sometimes we, we expect to give forgiveness to other people. And we forget that we also have to forgive ourselves. So forgiving yourself is to remember the pain you carry in the heart. And then go to the mirror and see yourself in the mirror. And the person you see in the mirror, you say, I forgive you. Forgive yourself. Because if you don't forgive yourself, how do you expect other people to forgive you? And then key number five, learn to listen. I said, and I'll say it again. Because of our culture, because of where we came from, we love to talk. But we rarely open our ears to what people are saying to us. Even in the house of God, we rarely listen to what the Spirit of God is speaking to our hearts. So it is important to always open your ears and listen to the heart of other people. And I said, the best gift you can offer to a friend is to listen to their problems. And then key number six, we say to speak the truth. The Bible says we shall know the truth and it is the same truth that will give us freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So speaking the truth to one another is a medicine. Even those who wronged you, it is important to tell them how much they wronged you. Don't add weight to what they did not do. Tell them the truth. And that was key number six. Then key number seven, which was on Friday. Take a bitter pill of repentance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said on Friday that sometimes because of who we are, we don't find it comfortable to repent. Because sometimes we say, I go to church every day. I pray they wronged me. For me, I'm a saint. Why do I have to repent? Why repent? Repentance is something that humbles you. Sometimes people say repentance is a sign of weakness. But that's not true. Repentance is a sign of strength. Weak people will never repent. You see, repentance helps you to connect with the Holy Ghost. Repentance makes you naked before God. Your nakedness before God is what qualifies you to be a child of God. God should know our strength and God should know our weaknesses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So repentance is something we should do. Because we make mistakes every day. Every day. Actually, every hour. We may not be doing certain sins. Because there are those sins we have classified. Stealing. Killing. Adultery. All those are the sins we have categorized. But most of us, we do them in our hearts. 
Other people don't see that. But deep inside of your heart, you may be a murderer. You may be a fornicator. You may be a thief. You have jealousy in your heart. Because this is the gospel truth. Every time you are insulted by people, you curse them. You have killed them. Jesus said, if you look at a woman with the rust eyes, you have already committed adultery. So killing is not holding a panga only. Destroying someone is not doing it physically. You may do it in your heart. And that is why we should always repent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And today's message is the last key. Save your life and forgive. Let's stand on our feet and pray. Save your life and forgive. 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 I don't know who wronged you. I don't know how much they wronged you. There are different things they have done in your life. Could be your father. Could be your mother. Could be your sister or your brother. A close friend. A relative. Save your life. And forgive. Save your life. And forgive. Heavenly Father, this is another chapter that is going to be written in our hearts. I commit your people to you. Treat them just as they are. Father, we surrender our hearts to you. Forgiveness is not easy. But we are going to do it. Not because of them. But because of us. Heavenly Father, I pray that you open the eyes of the understanding. I pray that you expose their hearts to them. Save your life and forgive. Father, we thank you for what you are about to say. And we praise you for what you are about to do. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may take your seats. Matthew chapter number 18, verse 21. Matthew. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Nuko Petero aramwegera aramubaza ati, Data buja, mwene data nangirira nabi nzamubabarira kangahe, ngeze kuri karindwi. Then Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy times seven. Yesu aramu subizati. Singuge yuko jeza karinwi. Ahuko yuko jeza mirongo irinwi karinwi. If my brother sins against me, Movani mwe wanjena hango sereza. How many times shall I forgive him? Zamu babari rekanga e. This is Peter. Uyari Petero. Most Christians have this feeling in their hearts. If they wronged me, why should I even forgive them? How many times shall I forgive my brother if he sins against me? Up to seven times in the Jewish culture, Forgiveness was always three times. And it became a habit for many people to punish after three times. 
You would make mistakes for three times and then somebody had the right to take you to jail. So when Peter was with Jesus, they said, Teacher, how many times shall I forgive my brother if he sins against me? And then Peter mentioned the seven, expecting Jesus to say three times. To his surprise, Jesus did not say three times. Instead, he said, forgive 70 times seven. This was a great disappointment to Peter. Most of us, when our hearts are hungry and angry, we want people who offended us to be punished. And for some reason, if you are to forgive them, do it just once. And I remember when our kids would draw a line. If you cross this line, I will show you who I am. Deep in our hearts, that's how we feel. They have already crossed the red line. I cannot even forgive them once. So Peter was troubled. They wronged me. Teacher, how many times should I forgive them? Should I do it seven times? No, 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 not seven. Not seven, Peter. Instead, 70 times seven. So today we are going to do some calculations. This is how it is going to do. How many times should you forgive those who wrongs you? Those people that wronged you. On a daily basis, how many times should you forgive them? Jesus said, 70 times 7. He said this. 70 times. Then times 7. And if you know how to make some calculations, what is the answer? How many? 490. Okay, 490. So 490 times should you forgive a day. Not in two days. So which means, which means forgiveness should be your heartbeat. I don't care what they did. Forgive. Every minute, even when you are reading the Bible, and you remember something, forgive when you are eating food, other people are not eating, forgive when you are sleeping and you are snoring, forgive in your dreams, forgive everywhere you go, forgive in your bedroom, forgive in the bathroom, forgive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not me who did this. It's not me who made this. It's Jesus himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then this means um, let's go to the book of Daniel chapter number 9. Verse 24. The Bible says a period of 70 sets of 7 has been decreed to your people and your holy city to finish their rebellion to put an end to their sin. Then there is a very complicated book. 
I don't want to take you there a lot. But in the future we'll be reading the book of Daniel and the Revelations. What you should understand the New Testament is a reflection of the Old Testament. So whatever you find in the New Testament you also find it in the Old Testament. In other words, the Old Testament is the shadow of the New Testament. So in the Jewish culture they had this tradition of sanctifying themselves. So one, pa one particular night an angel called, Dan angel called Gabriel appeared to Daniel. And he was commanding Daniel, it was something like a prophecy that people should be sanctified in 70 years. Weeks. So if we go back to our calculations, next slide. Next slide. It is 70 weeks according to the book of Daniel. 70 weeks. How many days are in a week? So times seven days in a week. The answer is 490. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when Peter is asking Jesus, how many times should I forgive my brother? He, he was meaning this one, Jesus, when he answered. In the New Testament is there, in the Old Testament is there. So my brother, my sister, you could be here. And you are saying, Pastor, it's too much on me. Let me tell you this. Forgiveness is not easy. But forgiveness is important to you. You know, failure to forgive. Mark this. Failure to forgive. It is like drinking poison. Expecting your enemy to die. I have to repeat this. Failure to forgive. It is like you taking poison and expecting your enemy to die. Because we die every day in our hearts. You see, the Bible is a very interesting book. 75 times the Bible mentions. Forgiveness. 75. Forgive 75 times. The Bible is telling us forgive. But the Bible will never explain how. Because forgiveness is an individual thing. It is you to know how to forgive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Forgiveness is an individual thing. There is no particular formula. Some people forgive on the internet. By writing emails. Other people forgive one another by calling on phone. Some other people forgive by inviting people on the table. Forgiveness has no formula. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible is mentioning it 75 times. But the Bible is not telling us how. On Friday, I shared about the story of uh, two neighbors in Scotland. One guy had a neighbor who was considered evil according to him. They were neighbors. 
For the first year, he prayed that his bad neighbor may die. The neighbor did not die. He prayed for the second for the second year for the neighbor to die. The neighbor did not die. Five years, the neighbor did not die. Ten years, the neighbor did not die. Remember, I told you this. Bad people don't die. Hallelujah. Then an angel appeared to him in the night and said I want to bless you ask for anything but remember this whatever you ask for I will give it to you and then your neighbor will get a double My goodness. If I ask for a car, my neighbor who I hate will get two cars. If I ask for a plane, my neighbor will get two. If I ask for one million, my neighbor will get two. So he said, I have an idea. Mm, I have an idea. He told the angel, remove one of my eyes. So that my neighbor can lose both eyes. Unforgiveness forgiveness what happens to us because we wish those people who wronged us to die we don't wish anything good to happen to them you rather suffer so that they can also suffer I will never go back to that church the pastors wronged me they hurt me I'd rather stay home. Then you lose heaven because they wronged you. Somebody by the name of uh, Confucius from China. He said, if you start a journey of revenge, Prepare to dig two graves. One for you. Another one for your enemy. Ladies and gentlemen. Forgiveness is about you. It helps you personally. When I was a child. I suffered because of what my parents did. I grew up with anger. Then when I grew up, it's like I had uh, disagreements with everybody. Then when I completed high school, I didn't trust them. I didn't love them. You see, we come from families that are not really passionate to what we do. So sometimes you remember how your family has been handling you since childhood. You wonder what you should do to them. But forgiveness helps you personally. Because when you let go of those things out of your heart, it changes your life. It helps you personally. So this neighbor from uh, uh, Europe, he said, instead of my neighbor to get double of what I get, 
wa muntu rero wo muri cyagihugu mu burayo wavuze ngo aho kugira ngo icyo nakira n'umuvandi mwanje umuturanyi wanje cyakire take one of my eyes mukure mijisho rimwe ryanje so that he can he can lose to kugira ngo wa wundi we abura masabiri and forgiveness kubabarira put us in the grave even when we go to church bidushira mumva nubwo tuba tukijya ku rusengero and forgiveness will never make you enjoy life and forgiveness will disconnect your joy from God and forgiveness will put you in a bondage forever we see you happy but inside you are crying forgiveness is something bitter to do but once you do it freedom comes your way hallelujah hallelujah let's stand on our feet jesus said blessed are the merciful for they will be shown Sometimes forgiveness is a gift we want to give to our neighbors. But something you have to understand deep inside of your heart. Forgiveness is the master key that opens your heart to freedom. Just remember those people that wronged you. You've been wishing them to die. You've been wishing bad things to happen to them. Those things you have been wishing to happen to them. And Christian life is all about sowing and reaping. Every time you plant a bad seed in your heart, you are wishing your neighbors to suffer. It is something you are going to harvest you personally. Every time you tithe, God blesses you. Every time you do bad things, you get bad things in return. So every, sometimes we see how much they wronged us. And we feel we can't forgive them. Because there's too much. Blessed are the merciful. For they will be shown mercy. Jesus said, If you forgive, then my Father in heaven is going to forgive you. If you don't forgive, the Father in heaven is not going to forgive you. So you've been uh, living a bad life here because of unforgiveness. So how much more will it be if you lose heaven just because you did not forgive? But my sister here, here is something for you. Forgiveness is going to set your life free. God created you for a special purpose. And God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. It is very hard to do. But I beseech you today by the mercies of God to forgive yourself forgive others save your life on friday i said we are in end times this is the special moment in our lives where we should connect with one another in peace where we should connect with one another in harmony and this is the best time for us to connect with God like never before. 
you are God's own idea. Forgiveness is going to change your life. With our hands lifted up, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, it's not about them. It's about us. I pray today that you may speak to someone here. In his heart, he says it was too much. Too much. I can't let go. I can't let go. Too much on me. Lord, Heavenly Father, I pray today that you may speak to this person. She's been struggling for a long time. The family has been disconnected for a long time. When the husband has not been a blessing. Father, I pray that you may interfere in her life. There is a person inside of you. That person inside of you has been crying. No wonder you don't put on weight. No wonder you don't enjoy what you do. Your heart is disconnected from reality. God has never changed. But you keep changing. God has never forgotten you. But you have gone miles away from him. You are always fighting for yourself. Fighting for yourself. God is supposed to fight for you. When you forgive, you are giving God approval to fight on your behalf. Today is a special day for you. I don't know what you are going through. I don't even understand your situation. I don't know what they did. I pray that you forgive yourself today. And once you do that, make another step and forgive them. Because it's all about your life. Remember, they wronged you. They did not love themselves more. You think they are happy. They are also crying. It is a good moment for you to forgive and save your life. Jesus said, It's not only seven times that I should forgive the wrongdoer, but 70 times seven. As your heart beats this morning, as your heart is beating right now, let it beat with forgiveness. It is going to be a hard exercise for you to do, but you are going to do it because you love yourself. With our hands lifted up, let's say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I want to change my life. I'm forgiving them. I don't care what they did to me. I'm saving my life. I'm saving my life. I'm saving my life. I'm saving my life. Now start forgiving. Forgive. Forgive. Mention their names in your mouth. Forgive them. 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 Forgive
forgive them 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 yes they hurt you forgive them they wronged you forgive they even dust over you they even dust over you they, they were always happy because you are suffering. Still forgive them. They never came to apologize. Forgive them. Heavenly Father, I don't know whose message it is today. But there is a person here who has been failing to forgive because it was too much. It was one episode after the other. They wronged him in, like in series. Before recovering from one event, they wronged him. Again, again, again and again. I want to pray to you that God in heaven is not limited in the power. God in heaven is not limited in the love. Heavenly Father, I pray for this person. I don't know who it is. But this message is for this particular person. I pray that you may give this person the strength to let go. Open his heart. Open the heart. So that those evil desires may come out. Save your life. And forgive. As welcome the worship team on the stage. I pray that God may continue to change your life. That person inside of you that has been crying is the same person who is headed to heaven or to hell. The person we see outside pretending to be who he is not is not the person destined to heaven. So as you take another step to forgive your life, you are helping your inside person to prosper. Father, I thank you for what you are doing in their hearts. I thank you for what you are about to do in Jesus' name. Let's give a shout of praise to God. He is worthy of our worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Hallelujah. As we come to the end of this service, I pray that you go back home in peace. But lift your heart to God. And remember this. Salvation minus forgiveness equals nothing. You are a child of God. Let's pray with the closing prayer. Father, I give you all the glory. I worship you today. And I thank you. The person you have touched this morning 
is also a grandchild of Abraham. Speak to their hearts today and have your way. In Jesus' name. God bless you.